Hello and welcome to the Toneless Gear channel. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to modify a snare Volca Beats with the capacitor mod. Um, my friend tried out my snare Volca Beats over Christmas last year and he really, really liked it. Uh, so much so that he bought one himself, but he was so dissatisfied with the stock snare that he got me to do it to his as well. So hopefully he's going to be really happy with it. And we're going to talk about how it sounds stock, how to make the stock one sound good by layering it with the clap and just how it sounds at the end. Like it sounds so much better. There's so much more white noise, sounds a little bit more 808-esque. There are other mods that you can do, but I'm just going to be focusing on the Capacitor C78 mod for this video. So with that demo, you can hear that the stock snare has got a really short decay and there's hardly any top end to it. So it definitely would be improved if you could lengthen out that decay and get a bit more of a snap and crack on it. Here is how it sounds in the mix with the other instruments in the Volca Beats. So with a bit of a parameter adjustment, you can see that they've got a really nasty distorted sound. But if you layer the cap and snare together, you can get like quite a nice wholesome snare sound. But this is an example of what you can do with a stock Volca Beats to create a nice enough snare sound that will carry. So here I'm just unmuting and muting the snare and clap tracks so that you can hear them individually to show what the layering effect was. It's time to talk about what the component is that is actually added to the Volca Beats, which ends up changing the sound so much. There's a component called C78 on the circuit board, which was actually omitted from the Korg Volca Beats. So it's just two silver pads that if you add a capacitor to, you get all of the top end that I was talking about that was missing from the Volca Beats originally. I found a blog post by a user called Dimitri, and they made a fantastic PDF that shows the full schematic of the Volca Beats, including a nice scale drawing in Adobe Illustrator. It's not, it might not be exactly what the schematic is, but it's enough so that you're able to do this mod and work out where in the circuit you should be positioning stuff. The user also includes really good photos of where each individual component is on the board. So if you do want to try this, I highly recommend you click the link in the description below and you'll be able to find his PDF really easily and it can just take you through exactly where you need to put stuff. So without further delay, this is what you need to complete the mod for the Volca Beats. You need a Volca Beats, you need a capacitor. I've chosen 680 nanofarad box style for this. You also need a Phillips miniature screwdriver, which is really handy for taking apart the Volca Beats because there's loads of screws and accessing the PCB. You need a soldering iron because there is some soldering in this modification. I use a hot glue gun to secure the capacitor to the PCB board. I also use flux and solder. The flux helps the solder flow much more easily into the pads and as they're so small that's a really useful thing. I also use needle nose pliers because I use them to bend the legs into the pads so that you can get a nice secure solder joint. Then I also have a solder sucker which is very useful. It's really easy to make a mistake on this mod and it's great to be able to reverse that if you need to. The final tool I use is a helping hands, which is two crocodile clips, which hold the PCB in place whilst you work on it, which is so useful for the fight, like the minuscule soldering work that you're doing. And there's also a magnifying glass on them, which is really useful for identifying the pads that you need to solder to, as well as checking your work afterwards. So first thing you've got to do is unscrew all the screws on the back of the Volca Beats and the one inside the battery compartment. Leave the three surrounding the speaker alone as the speaker can stay connected for this mod. And that will expose the PCB. So what you do at this point is you can see that there are four wires connected to the PCB in the enclosure. So you want to remove those so that we can open up and look inside the PCB more easily without putting any strain on those wires. 
So yeah, you unscrew those, and then you'll see that now we have a completely separate PCB, which is, makes this mod so much easier to do. So there's actually plenty of other mods that you can do to the Volker Beats, and if you see there's TX Ground and V0 or VD, that's actually a MIDI out test point or a mod point where you can get put a MIDI jack on there. And then, yeah, you have MIDI out, which is really good for syncing to DAWs like Ableton and syncing to other devices that only accept MIDI in. The other thing that you can do is you can do individual out mods. I'd say this is the only weakness apart from the snare of the Volker Beats that you can't do individual outs. So if, for example, you wanted a massive reverb on the clap and the snare, you wouldn't be able to without doing it to all of the other instruments. But if you were able to isolate those and pull them out separately on different jacks, then you could treat the sounds individually for a better musical effect. It's quite a fiddly mod and a lot of the test points are there, but for example one says kick, snare and toms, but to get the kick and the snare isolated you actually need to go through some of the vias which are the really tiny holes there and I haven't tried that yet, but I will be trying some stuff later on, watch out for that. Then there are a few more remaining screws on the PCB which you undo and I've been putting them in like the drawers at the top of my circuit board. Uh, mat and that's really useful for not losing it and the uh, I accidentally broke the spudger there removing the pot covers because you need to get those to remove the front plate from the backboard PCB and for the first time now you can actually see C78 which is just to the left of the IC I'm going to zoom in a little bit and point it out but yeah so there there are two pads there which is essentially an empty capacitor slot which it appears Korg either forgot to put in or left off purposefully for some decision. Which is pretty weird to me, because it doesn't sound as good without this. So yeah, that I see there below, um, below C78, that's actually where I glue the capacitor onto. So yeah, I'm using the helping hands just to hold it in place, got my magnifying glass so I can see and inspect things properly. Uh, heated up the hot glue gun, and then yeah, I'm j just putting the capacitor in place on top of that I see, snipping the legs, just getting them the right kind of length. And then once that's on, I've used the needle nose pliers to bend each wire into each one of those pads. Cool, so yeah, now I'm soldering in and removing the excess solder as I go. So yeah, now you can see it's glued onto that IC above and the two legs are soldered to where the two pins were. So this is where a continuity tool is really useful in my voltmeter. So I'm just checking that there's a clear connection to ground and a clear connection to those diodes and resistors that were shown in the schematic. So yeah, the other thing that I mentioned is actually once the PCB is back on the faceplate, the capacitor actually sits really nicely and snugly, so it's not really going to go anywhere. So that should be a really cool mod that stays and doesn't break with time. So yeah, now that's in, I've done my continuity checks, I actually want to test that it's actually worked and that I haven't ruined the Volker Beats entirely. So it's turned on and then let's give it a sound demo. It works, amazing. So yeah, you hear that snare has loads more sustain, loads more top end and it's just so much better. So yeah pretty successful. And I love the stutter function. Hey. So yeah, I'm just screwing the stuff back together and because I had the screws for the PCB specifically in that top right, the drawer separately, I know which ones I have to put in and where. And I was just showing off that sweet sandwich between the two solder boards. Just reattaching the wires that I removed earlier, so that's the power and the speaker wires back to the PCB. And then, yeah, good to go. Everything's back together. It's just time for a sound demo at the end. So yeah, what I really like is now you no longer need the clap and the snare to be doing the same part. They can bounce off of each other really nicely now because they've both got enough weight to them. And 
And that is how to mod your Volker Beats with the C78 Capacitor mod. Thank you very much for tuning in. And yeah, if you've got any queries or any questions about how to do the mod yourself, please let me know. And yeah, like and subscribe because I'm hoping to do loads more videos, as I said last time. I actually modded this Volker Beats about a month ago and I uploaded a jam video before this video. So if you're keen to check out how this sounds in a techno setting and with an MS-20 and a space echo, uh, check it out please, uh, I'll link it just below. Thanks again, see you later.